started. Uh, once again, this is our live lesson, and we're here to discuss DDM 101, 102, 103, 104. Any questions you have, any pronunciation problems you might have, uh, give them to me, and I'll do my best to solve them. And always the beginning. Okay. Okay, good, Daniel. Go ahead, Daniel. Okay. Uh, uh, why, why didn't you include uh, standard stand-up routine? Okay, I sometimes do, and actually, Daniel, um, for DDM one hundred five, I was going to do a stand-up routine, but uh, I decided not to. May in the future, I will do another stand-up section. Um, the reason I don't is because, uh, well, it depends. Um, do you really want me to? Yeah, well, at least, uh, previous, uh, at least the previous one was pretty, pretty and I, I kind of, I'm learning to to joke, how to joke in English, you know, <laughs> and, I, and I, I, I want, I want some stand-up experience, you know. So, I so another I, thing I, you want to do is stand-up comedy. No, 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 I, it's it's not that thing. But uh, uh, how can I say that? You know. Uh, being able to joke in English, I think it's important. Important. Having a sense of humor is important. That's right. Yeah, and uh, uh, watching w watching uh, the, all these stand up stand up um, videos is, I think, it's pretty pretty good, but pretty salubrious to your language skills. Yeah, I'll tell you though. Um, the art of comedy is probably the most difficult part of language. Uh, comedy is truly an advanced area of communication. Um, and because of that, because comedy truly is advanced, you need to know culture, intonation, pronunciation, timing. It's, it's all of that. It's very important. So for many students, it's very difficult. That's why a lot of American movies that are comedies are not funny uh, in another country um, because of the timing or the culture or the, the intonation or the double entendre, the extra meanings, the innuendo. There are many, many art forms of comedy. Uh, that's why I don't do it often in DDM. However, Daniel, I will do another one probably sooner than later. Probably within the month, I'll do a, a comedy. I don't know if it's going to be a stand-up comedy or an interview comedy, but uh, I will do one, okay? Okay, no problem. Because you know, you, uh, for me, I, I I can watch these videos on my own, on my own. But uh, I can I I can uh, it's it's very likely that I uh, I will miss something. Sure, uh, sure. But yeah, uh, but when you when you personally explain it, you give us all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just it's writing it. In, 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 intonation and etc. Well, um, uh, for example, for example, when when he said, "I'm getting some hankering for for double mint gum," he did it with a with a specific intonation, with a specific country intonation. Yeah. And uh, for me, at first, it it was it was it wasn't. Uh, too clear. Yeah, you know, it wasn't very funny at all. No, it, it was it was funny, funny, but I didn't I didn't get the 
uh, the intonation joke. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. It is comedy is difficult. Personally, I really enjoy uh, comedy. Um, I like teaching comedy. Um, that's why I, I do like Seinfeld. Seinfeld is. Uh, you know, not too difficult, um, but it's not the easiest either. Um, so, yeah, uh, Daniel, once again, I, I will include more. And, of course, I'll do my best to explain the timing and intonation and culture and background and innuendo and double entendre, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. But... Uh... I'm, I'm going to ask you something, do something on my own. May I say, can I say, do something uh, by myself or do something on myself? Okay, okay. Uh, so, yeah, do something on my own, do something by myself, do something on myself. No, can't say that. Yeah. Yep, this one is illegal. Cannot say that one. <laughs> but uh, by myself, it's okay. Yep, that's absolutely fine. Do something by myself is great. We can also say this, uh, do something all my own. Uh, this is probably a, co uh, a colloquial expression, but some people uh, do say this, all my own, emphasizing myself, my own. Or do something myself, not really. Yeah, no, that's fine too. Uh, do something myself. I like doing things myself. Yep, that's absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. I like playing golf myself. Yeah, okay. Yeah, in that situation, uh, I like playing golf myself. That might be confusing. Uh, usually we would say uh, it with this, but once again, it is possible. Yes, it is possible. Yeah. English is flexible. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you have many, many options, Shane. There are, and which makes it confusing, yes. When you see something like this, everybody, you say, oh my goodness, there are so many options. What do I do? Uh, don't worry. Just choose one. Which one is obvious? Which one is logical? Which one is easy to you? Which one is easy for you? And just use that one. If this one is natural for you, then memorize it and use that. Don't worry about the other ones, okay? If somebody else says it, You'll understand. You'll be able to get the, catch the meaning. Okay, I'm going to... Hold on a second, guys. Uh, da, da, da. Yep, go ahead. Next question. How can there be no other questions? Yes, um, uh, excuse me, Shai. Yeah. Yes, um, I have a question. Um, when um, you speak about the flat uh, T, yeah. um, for, example, uh, for example, in Twitter, no? Yes. Um, when you, um, in your explanation video, for example, uh, you say uh, miss it or minute, um, the T uh, in this situation changes. Is, is correct or? And in, in the in which uh, word? Uh, for example, in when um, Elaine was talking with Greg and said and um, finished the phrase with minute, mean it, minute, no? Ah, um, uh, you mean with it at the end of the sentence? Yes, yes. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, and that with in that situation, that's not a flat T. Uh, okay, because it's uh, very fast uh, to uh, right, right for me. Uh, so I don't know is it, uh, is it is, is a flat T or um, a normal T or so um, an English T. 
Right, right. So you're talking about this sentence here. Uh, I yeah, guess as yeah. an airline pilot, you're one of the few people who can say that and mean it. In this case, yeah, yeah. we call it a stop T, a stop T. And I usually uh, use a, a, a symbol like this. Okay, okay. Okay? Thank you. Thank yeah. Thank you very much. So here is a flap T. Got it. Yes. Got it. Yes. But at the end, it's going to be a stop T. So in this case, too, pilot is a stop T. It's a stop T. Uh -uh. Okay. Okay? Yes, yes. Thank you very much. You bet. You bet. 30 is uh, a flat is, T. Excuse me, but what is uh, you bet? Ah, you, you bet. bet. Ab you bet means uh, you're welcome, absolutely. No problem. Uh, fine, but bet is to <laughs> when you bet in yeah, for horses or yeah, um, for the gambling. <laughs> for gambling, yeah. That's right. But it also means no problem. You're welcome. Okay, okay. Very, very good, good expression. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I recommend yeah. everybody memorize and use this expression. Yes, you have to live in Las Vegas to say you bet. <laughs> <laughs> you change house and you say now you bet. <laughs> you can say you bet anywhere you want. That's okay. Yes, yes, yes. It's a joke. It's a joke. Okay, let me let me go to Jihang's question. Uh, this word, this word, and this word. The pronunciation. Okay, so I'll put those in the center and get a little bit bigger. So this word, and I'll turn my camera on so you guys can see. This word, the first word is wreath. So that TH has a lot of air. Wreath. 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 And I have to ask Mohammed. Mohammed, can you hear me? I'm going to mute his microphone again. Uh, if you're not speaking, everybody, please mute your microphone. Thank you. Okay, so wreath wreath and then the next one leaf leaf make sure that f is very long and the l is clear and then leaves leaves so here we have the f sound and then it changes to a v sound and of course a v and an s together give us a z so lots of vibration Leaves, leaves. So wreath, leaf, leaves. Okay, we can uh, all those. Uh, hopefully, that's that's clear for you. Jiang, is that okay? If Jiang had a microphone, I could hear uh, Jiang's pronunciation. I got it. Good. Very good. Mohammed. Hi, Coach Shane. Hi, uh, Mohammed. I have to ask you. The background noise is very loud, so when you're not speaking, please mute your microphone, okay? Okay, okay. <laughs> How are you doing? Okay, very good. Okay, now. <laughs> I'm fine. That's good. I was going. Not too bad. Not My microphone and uh, mute. Yeah, keep it on. Keep it on mute when you're not speaking. Okay. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, what's the What's the difference between coach and teacher? Hmm. Well. And uh, which one is high? <laughs> high level. Okay. Okay. All right. So Mohammed's question is coach versus teacher. Uh, well, first of all, simply put, a teacher has a license and they've gone to the university and they've studied education, education methods, uh, how to manage a classroom, uh, time schedule and class structure, class design, uh, administrative work. So they, it's a technical job. A teacher is basically a technical job. 
A coach is usually somebody without a license, but with a lot of experience. The mission of a teacher is to give a student new information that will be useful. The mission of a coach is to take somebody who has a talent and make that talent better. So who is higher? Uh, I think a teacher's job is very respectful. And a coach's job is very respectful, but they're very different. So I don't think there's a, a difference as to who is higher. However, who should get more respect? In my opinion, school teachers should get the most respect. School teachers have a very difficult job, I don't think people realize. Um, so I call myself a coach. And the reason is for everything I said. I do not have a specific degree in teaching. My degrees were in business, international relations, and then in business. So nothing to do with teaching. However, I do have a lot of experience in helping people learn the language. And let me see. Um, let me see. I started helping students learn English in 1987. So that's what? It's a long time. 13, 27 years. 27 years of helping uh, students learn English. And, and as you help people, you learn about how to make them better. And that's become my mission, is to most of my students, all of my students, have a good base, a good foundation in English. They just need to open up, make the sounds better, improve their listening, build their intonation, and build their confidence. And that's my job. That's why I call myself a coach. There's a big problem. You thought only Korean students. I'm not a racist, you know. But no. Korean students... No, you're right. Uh, I, I taught only Korean students is not true, but 95% of my students up until two years ago, two and a half years ago, um, what were Korean students. Um, when I was at the University of Minnesota, I worked with other students too from other parts of the world. Um, so for three years, I worked with many different students from different countries, but for 15 years, 16, 17 years, almost 20 years, just Korean students. That's true. Uh, it was interesting. Even when I was teaching in Korea, sometimes students from the, or people who worked at the embassy, like the French embassy or the Portuguese, Portugal's embassy, would come to my classes too. Uh, so that was kind of funny. But yeah. Um, so when I started teaching on YouTube, uh, it was a great opportunity for me to hear the different types of English the Russian English and the German English and the, the Iranian English and the Saudi Arabian English and the Mexican English and all the different types, the Brazilian English. Uh, so it was a good experience and I learn every day thanks to you guys. More Thank questions? You. Yeah. So you can call me coach, <laughs> not teacher. Never call me professor or doctor. Absolutely not. All right. <laughs> okay. What about pronunciation, Shane? If I say, uh, will you go to a party, you know, uh, W sound, uh, can I skip it? Will you go to a party? Will you go? Will you go? Will you go? Really fast. Uh, Okay, in this, will you go, okay, will you go to the party? Um, 
of so yeah i'm gonna say great. yeah would be great for example uh would be great would be great you know i'm i'm, I'm gonna skip a w sound not the, the no i i really don't think you should skip the w sound uh but at the beginning you know uh it's not it's not really uh, clear yeah it's okay just, yeah this is it's like the th hold on i'll write this out would it Please mute your mics, everybody. Mute your mics, please. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's it's like this. And the same thing with sentences that begin with th. When we start speaking, the mouth is closed. So it's not that we cancel the w. In my head, I'm absolutely saying will you go to the party but my mouth is closed and it comes like, comes like this may you go to the party may you go to the party so for you as a foreign student listening it sounds like there's no w i i understand however there is a w it's not the W you have been taught. If you go to, this is why I don't like the, the YouTube teachers who teach pronunciation with one word. Uh, there's a teacher, Rachel, Rachel's English, great teacher. But the, the English that she teaches is real basic level, okay? So she, she would teach will will okay and she shows you the w pronunciation which is great however in real daily english nobody says will okay um it would be very funny we say will you go to there will you go there tomorrow will you go there tomorrow will you go to the party will you go to the party so you don't hear the will but I am saying will. So that's why you, I really want you to focus, even students who are confident in pronunciation, I want you to focus on my uh, answers videos so that you can hear and we can talk about those questions. Will. We don't say that. We say, will you, will you go? Will you go? So uh, my lips are closed. But the first sound I'm making is a W, even though it's short. Will you go to the party? Will you go to the party? Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be great? So in this case, wouldn't that. So the sound is wouldn't that, wouldn't that, wouldn't that. But if my lips are closed, the W will be difficult to hear. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be great? But it's not wouldn't that. It's not wouldn't that. It is wouldn't that but it's that real natural style. So the answer to your question, can you cancel the W? No, you cannot. Can't cancel it. Got to keep it. But the trick is to start with your lips closed and say it fast. Most ESL students are not ready to do that. So I always encourage you guys to speak as clearly as possible. Will you go to the party? Wouldn't that be great? Say it like that. That's the best way for you guys to speak. And as you speak English every day and you say the same patterns and the same structures every day, then the pronunciation will get easier and more natural. And eventually one day you'll be saying, will you go to the party? Wouldn't that be great? Does that make sense? Yeah, Gretchen, to the same topic, uh, for example, you're asking me, uh, Sergei, how was the day? Was she great or hot? You know, uh, how was, you know, W is not really, uh, uh, was she hot, was she hot, or how okay. was the day? How yeah. was the day? This is, how, this is how it works. How's the day? How's, how's? House. Now, what's interesting, so it, it sounds like house, house, yeah. but there is a W. It's like a magnet feeling, house. You know that you take a north magnet and a south magnet and you, 
or a north and north, and you put them together, and you got that friction. Okay, yeah. that's that wuh, wuh, that W sound has that wuh, wuh, that type of friction, and that's what we say. How was how was? It's like your lips are north north, and they don't come together. How was how was the how was the how was the how was the date? So the tips of your lips, imagine them both being north magnets, and they come really close, but they don't close, and that gives you the W. That gives you the W. Even if you say it fast, how was the date? How was the date? How was the date? How was the date? Okay. Was she great? Was she great? Was she great? Was she nice? Was she nice? Was she nice? Once again, okay. though, it's still the W. Was she? Was she? Was she? Was she? Was she? Was she? Sounds Chinese. Was she? Was she nice? Was she nice? Really? Absolutely. Yeah. The date was. Your microphone cut you. Daniel, uh, go ahead. I, I should want to say, the date was delicious. Ah, uh, the date. Ha, 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 ha. The dried date. <laughs> Yo, stand-up comedian, yeah. Daniel. Uh, You're a stand-up comedian, Daniel. Okay, hold on a second, guys. Let me leave a message for Ferenc. Ferenc. You need, I'll make this a different color so you can see it, to change your audio setting from phone to microphone. Use the red arrow on your screen. That's the control panel. Yeah. Yeah, everybody has this problem the first time they join. But what she nice is the linking, yeah. She uh, sound uh, cancel, yeah. Z sound. Yep. Sound. That's exactly what right. What she nice, yeah. All right, Ferenc has joined us. Hi, Ferenc. Ferenc is moving his computer. Hi, Ferenc. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Great. Welcome. Hi. This is my first time I, I joined your meeting. Yes. We're very happy to have you. Oh, yeah. It was not so easy, so it took a little time, but it's, it's okay now. I can hear you and... And, and you can hear me, yes. Yes, that's right. Yeah, the first time is always the most confusing. And then in the future, it will be easy. So so don't worry, okay? Okay, and thank you for the instruction. So it helped a lot. Good, very good, very good. Yeah, this, I want, this is, today, Frank, this is the third time I gave those instructions. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're not alone. Okay. Frank, where are you from? I'm from Hungary, Middle from Hungary. Europe. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Really? Actually, one of my favorite foods is goulash. <laughs> and that's, yeah, that's a Hungarian goulash, right? Yeah, that's right. Oh, this, I, this is our, I this love is our it. Speaking of Hungary, you, you, you think about Hungary. Ha 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 you love you love to eat a lot <laughs> yeah both daniel and Daniel are stand up comedians <laughs> ha, 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 ha. what's what's that sergey uh daniel uh, did you say sex hungry <laughs> Keep it PG thirteen. PG. We got kids. We got kids watching these. <laughs> okay. Well, once again, Frank, uh, we're going through questions. You can ask a question on anything. Uh, we're in the middle. Uh, we're talking about DDM one hundred one, one hundred two, one hundred three, one hundred four. So it's it's open for anything. Pronunciation questions too. Okay. Okay. And, and I have to ask everybody, please mute. Your microphone. If you're not speaking, please mute your microphone.
for the background noise. Thank you. Jaskaran has joined us. How are you doing, Jazz? Good. Thank you. How about you? Not too bad. Not too bad. Okay. Uh, Ji Hang has a question. Uh, are there some dictation tips? Uh, sometimes it is hard to fill the blanks in uh, within three times. Yeah, Ji Hang, uh, and for everybody, the dictation is the least important part of DDM, although it is daily dictation. <laughs> now, do your best. In real life, how many times, uh, once again, so in a real life situation, how many times can you ask somebody to Okay, lots of, we got Enrique, I, I uh, muted your mic, there was some noise. So once again, the question, how many times can you ask somebody to repeat something? So they say, hey man, you want to see one of I'm sorry, what was that? I said you want to see I'm sorry, I couldn't understand. One more time, please. You can ask twice. That means you can listen three times. So the mission in your dictation should be to hear any sentence three times and understand it. Not necessarily dictate it. Dictate it properly but not perfectly so three times is your goal because in real life the maximum you can listen to something would be three times usually just once okay now when you're doing dictation at home for our assignments uh, I recommend five to ten times listening five to ten times after 10 times, if you still can't hear it, you're not going to hear it, at least not today. So no more than 10 times. Just do your best with 10 times. Write it down the first couple of times. Think about the grammar. Think about the meaning. Does it fit? Shouldn't this be past tense? Where's the noun? You can think about things like these. But then after, after between five and ten times, move on. If you have a chance, the next day, listen again. Because sometimes the next day, suddenly you can hear it. Okay? So my recommendation for the dictation, number one, don't worry about it. I will give you the answers. Number two, try it in three times. How much can you get, if anything, in three times? Number three, maximum 10 times. Some people listen 100 times. That's fine if you're really strong. But if it's frustrating for you, if it's difficult for you, no more than 10 times and then move on. Okay? It's a good question. I had a similar question yesterday too. Next question. The last question was about the grace period. Shane, uh, some, do you say sometimes grace before your dinner or not? Uh, at when I, my grandma and grandpa uh, are deceased. They, they've died. But when I would eat at my grandparents' house, we would say grace. But my mom and dad and, and at my house, we don't. Okay. Except, how does it sound? Except, except at Thanksgiving. And uh, how does it sound? Well, my grandfather used to do grace, and it, he was Catholic. And okay. if you know, I, I, maybe many of you are Catholic. Uh, Catholic, well, my grandfather, who was Catholic, was very quick. So it was basically, to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Thank you for this blessed meal. We promise to eat it and, and be thankful for doing everything and body da da da. Amen. So within ten seconds, it was done. <laughs> and uh, what about you? Oh, I never do it. Why not? I'm not Catholic. 
Uh, little bit in God. <laughs> Never talk about politics, religion, or the great pumpkin. <laughs> but Shane, I, and, I tell you why. And sexuality. There you go. Thank you, Daniel. Go ahead, Sergey. But Shane, if you watch American movies, you say it all the time. You see it all the time. Grace before the dinner. Yeah, if it's a big family dinner, and once again, even during Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving is America's one of one of America's big holidays. Most families, really, most families say grace. And saying grace, everybody, is praying, praying before dinner, praying before dinner. Um, but Dan, uh, but but that's Sergey. In in the movies, Hollywood is usually a bunch of stories. Um, so I really wouldn't believe it. In the typical American house, not many. Uh, very religious families will pray, definitely. It's a good thing. I think it's fine. I think it's good to pray. Uh, but most families will not. So the average American family doesn't. Doesn't do it. Doesn't, except I would say the average American family does pray on Thanksgiving. Only. Only yeah, on especially. That's right. That's right. But not every day. No, no. Extremely rare. And once again, my grandfather did pray every meal. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. But it was within 10 seconds. Five, five to 10 seconds, he was done. <laughs> you, you know, he was a great guy. I, I, I... Absolutely. Very disciplined. Absolutely. You know, Shane, Excuse I, 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 me, I like Shane. To... Oh, yeah, okay. Go ahead, Jose. Excuse me. I didn't understand the difference between the grace and the, the prayer. Okay, it's the same thing. So, saying ah, okay. grace is the same thing as praying. Uh, we, we usually... Okay, okay. Say grace before a meal. So in America, uh, uh, if you go to somebody's house, they might say to you, Jose, do you mind if we say grace? Do we? Do you mind if we say grace? And that yes, means, yes. do you mind if we pray? Okay, okay, yes, yes. That's a good expression. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And actually, you know what, everybody, this is actually a really important. I can say. Go ahead, Daniel. I can I can say say the prayer. Uh, you shouldn't. If somebody asks, you should always allow them. If somebody says, "Do you mind if I or we say grace?" Uh, you should always say, uh, "Please go ahead." Or, or go ahead, or, or I don't mind. So even though, even if you're not religious, you should still say, I don't mind. That's the polite thing. If somebody asks politely, um, I would say let them do it. And in my case, uh, once again, I do not go to church. Uh, however, if somebody says grace, I also fold my hands and shut my eyes. And when they're done, uh, if they say amen, I also say amen. Even though I, I don't go to church, I, I think it's respectful. And I don't think there's anything wrong with uh, saying grace. It gives you, even if you're not religious, it gives you a chance to think about, yeah, this is pretty cool to have a nice meal with these nice people. Don't you say amen, not amen? Oh, we say both. Amen, amen. Yeah, we say both. So at, a, at my grandpa's Catholic church, uh, they spoke Latin, so they always said amen. Sir, Kotschen, can I speak? Yes. Uh, Kotschen, could you please explain what is uh, preferable? Do you mind or don't you mind? Okay. Uh, do you mind is much more common. 
Do you mind, especially, do you mind uh, shutting the window? Uh, don't you mind? When do we say that? Because if we translate in into Russian, for example, ah, we yeah. say, don't you mind? <laughs> Okay, yeah, this is, yeah, I think in Korean it might be the opposite too. It gets, it does get confusing. Yeah, don't you mind uh, is very uncommon. Okay, so I think the best thing to think about, Gulya, is in Russian when you want to say don't you mind, just automatically change it to do you mind. Does that help? Yes, clear. Yeah, that's a good question. And this is the thing, uh, these grammar questions, it, they really do depend on your language because sometimes the languages are opposite. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also the, the next question is, uh, what is the good pronunciation of the word uh, schedule or scheduler? Okay, so in America we say scheduler with a K, mm -hmm. and in the in the UK they say scheduler, but the UK is changing to schedule. So, uh, once again, in the U.S., uh, scheduled, scheduled, scheduler, anything, uh, it's, it sounds like this. In the U.K., some people do say schedule, schedule, uh, but many British people do say schedule, schedule. So, my recommendation, stick with schedule. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. You bet. We have a question from Jazz. Speaking of praying for a meal, for me, eating with awareness is the best prayer. That's right. When you just eat, uh, eat. Don't let anything roll in your mind. Keep it concentrated at the bite you are chewing. Uh, that's my prayer. Yeah, I, I agree. I think uh, being, being conscious or being aware, being in the moment, as we've studied in DDM, being in the moment or being present is important. Yeah, yeah. Having a big picture in front of you with same sheet. It's the right idea. <laughs> That's the right idea, yeah. You're talking like a coach, Shane. Yeah. Like I have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about, I like saying, what the fuck, what the, the hell, what I know, but uh, does it sound natural if I say, what the black? What the black? What the black? Okay, that's a good question. That's uh, that's what we call the mitigation of a bad word. Uh, so, and we have uh, that situation in many situations. The word f u c k is a bad word. And when I'm with my mother or when I'm around uh, strangers, uh, I I would never use the word. It's uh. It's a, it's a bad word. Uh, does that mean I don't use the word? No, I do use the word. But it's, you, you don't want to say the word in most situations. And that goes with lots of swear words. So when you're really angry and you want to say, what the, and it's a bad word, what many Americans do is we change the word. And in that case, flock. We could say F-L-O-C-K. Um, and everybody would understand that you're very angry, but it sounds, it sounds much, 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 much better than saying F-U-C-K. Um, so once again, this is very interesting, an interesting point. There are many families who move from one country to the United States from Korea to the United States, from uh, Brazil to the United States, from France to the United States. And the parents 
their English ability is not so good. But the children, their English skill is almost native English. And I say almost native because they, it's not native exactly. To be a native English speaker takes about three generations. So if the mom and dad move to America, the children speak perfect English, but it's still not native English. But the children's children, that's the third generation, they're going to be much closer to native English than their parents and, of course, their, their parents. Native English, uh, just so everybody understands, if you live in another country, you will never be a native English speaker. Your English can be perfect, your English can be excellent, but it's really going to be very difficult, almost, impo almost, almost impossible to get to native English speaking because so much of the language comes from family and tradition and discipline in the society. So when your parents don't speak the language natively, as a native speaker, they're not going to be able to teach you the same things that a native family will teach. Does that make sense? I mean, I'm going to say you something important, you know, but if you're a great co-worker or great guy, everybody loves you. You, you know, it's not really important how do you speak, uh, you know, English or German. Yeah, if you're a great guy, it's uh, yeah, not that important. Yeah, however, when it comes to certain words, okay, so certain words like the word, uh, like this word, for example, um, even if you're a great guy, uh, a lot, you, you, you're, you're never going to be a great guy to everybody. Nobody's going to be a great guy to everybody. And this, this type of word will upset a lot of people. Um, so even if you're a great guy and you're a, a very loving and caring and funny person, um, but you know, you like this word, you use this word, many people are going to have no problem, but a lot of people are going to have a big problem. Not just no problem, a big problem. And for example, um, my mom, I would never think about using this word near my mom. My dad... I might be able to say it, but I wouldn't try. Um, and I know that my dad has used this word. I know he's used it, okay? But still, it's not in, in the culture. It's just not, uh, it's too heavy of a word. It's too heavy of a word. Uh, even the word, and we don't have to, even this word. Uh, if I, when I'm at work, I would never use this word. When I'm, out, when I'm out drinking a beer with the same people, okay, so this is the thing. So I'm at work with, you know, my coworkers at the office, I would never use the word. But then all of us go for a beer uh, and hamburgers at night, then I can use the word. It depends on where you're at and what situation you're in. And if you use this word at the office, it, it, for most people, they don't like it. They will not like it. Uh, but out having a beer, totally fine. So that's, those are the things about the language uh, that you need to have experience. You need to be exposed to many different environments and see how language is used. The Internet is a dangerous place because on the Internet you can see this word everywhere. And Hollywood movies is dangerous because you can hear this word everywhere. But in reality, you do not hear the word.
At a bar? Yes. At a children's playground? Yes. At a baseball game? Yes. But in a house, at the office, in the shopping center? Never. So how and when you use the words is important. It doesn't matter if you're a great guy. It doesn't matter. It's, 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 this is what we call that cultural education. Yeah. So anyway, off my soapbox. Uh, can I can I say something? Yeah. Uh, it seems it seems to me a little bit I don't know, but it seems to me a little bit Victorian. Yep. Uh, because we have in Portuguese many a lot. A lot of bad words, and right. uh, we uh, I I don't have so much uh, problem, so many problems in saying these kind of words in front of a lot of people. Um, uh, depending on the way, uh, the situation, you yes. say these words. I agree. Uh, so I can say, for example, uh, F U C K in front of my mother. No problem. It depends on the situation. Okay. When you say that you you never should you never would say this word in front of your mother. I I I would say this word in front of my mother. Uh, 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 in in some situations, in I some uh, do do you understand? No, I do. Uh, uh, so I think it, uh, it's uh, obvious. Obviously, it's a, a cultural question. Yeah, and I do think, and I, and Daniel, I do agree. You said it sounds Victorian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I do agree. Uh, the English language does come from, you know, the UK, and the UK is a very structured, polite, uh, divided society, um, and uh, and we do have those cultural. <laughs> Alex, <laughs> Alex, microphone was killing us. The speakers. <laughs> Alex, I muted your microphone. <laughs> I think Alex is having. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I see that uh, being uh, 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 Americans uh, uh, speaking English and English coming from England. Uh, a same cultural basis came a lot. from England. A lot, yep. Uh, even a Victorian culture. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, do you think this is the, the question? I think it's based there. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, we, for example, we have, we have these two expressions, and in front of my mother, this is what comes out. Uh, when I'm talking with my sister, Yeah, I, I can say this no problem. I don't think I do. I don't think I do, but I, I can. Okay, I think somebody else had a question. Did you, did you understand uh, my, my point, Shane? <laughs> no, I, I do. Yeah, depending on the situation, uh, you might be able to use a word in Portuguese similar to that. Uh, in front of your mother. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I yeah. understand. But 
in English, uh, in the typical American family, I don't think that's the case. Um, this this word is a bad word in America, um, and even even the word uh, shit is is pretty bad. It's pretty. And what I mean by bad is is there there they almost have the feel of uneducated. Um, it has that kind of connotation to it. Uh, poor choice of words. Okay. More questions? Uh, hold on a second. Did you know like is nothing but a four letter word? No pun intended. <laughs> so is love. Love is a four. Ah, by the way, four letter word in America is a euphemism for bad words. So shit, fuck, damn. They're all four letter words. One, two, three, four. One, two, three three, four. Uh, so, so we do have that, uh, you know, don't use four letter words. Four letter words are bad. We do have that education. Uh, but then again, can you, we can say love is a four letter word. Can you include here S-L-U-T? S-L-U-T. Oh yeah, that's a word I don't, I never use. Uh, that's a word uh, this is a really bad word too. Very uh, bad. Uh, uh, word, worse than F U C K. Now it's a different. It's a different meaning. Uh, it, it's it's these two words are going to be related, um, and this is worse. But if you if you uh, uh, can if you want to. To uh, make someone cry. Uh, wh wh what's the be best word? Fuck a slut. Well, I hope you never want to make someone cry, but if you're really angry, this is the thing. Uh, when have I used this word? When I consider, first of all, I do not use the word to the person. That's really uneducated. That's really low. Uh, but if you describe a person, um, so I, I would use it to describe a person uh, I, I completely hate. I would use it to describe a woman that I completely hate. And that I believe is uh, truly evil, disgusting person. Uh, that's when I would use this word. And I would, once again, I, I wouldn't use it to the person's face. Uh, because I would never want to be near the person, uh, and yeah. So have I used this word? Yes, I've used this word, um, and I've used it to describe a woman that I completely hate and I believe is truly uh, evil and disgusting. So bo both are com completely offensive. Both words, this word and this word, very offensive. This word is even worse. Very bad word. And in comparison to, to F-U-C-K. It's a different type of word. I mean, it, that's, like, that's like saying steak and oranges. Okay, they're both food, but that's the only connection. So F-U-C-K is steak and S-L-U-T is oranges. They're both bad words, they're both food, but then there's no connection. There's no connection. Yeah, yeah. One is a verb and another is a... Oh, the, this, uh, we, we can use this word as a noun. So, for example... 
Oh yeah. The yeah. Fuck. yeah. So yeah. We, yeah, we can we can use this word in so many situations. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ah uh, yes. Another topic that I usually don't discuss. <laughs> yeah, let's change the topic. I agree. More questions. Okay, guys. Let's talk about stuff. I don't care. I think it was Ingrid. Go ahead, Ingrid. Yeah, I have a question to the podcast. Yeah. Eighteen, I think. You said a sentence. We accept you, but don't accept your lies. We accept you, but don't accept your lies. Yeah. And I couldn't figure out this sentence. Uh, do you remember when I be, said it? It was podcast. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the I question. Think. That was the question and answer section, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hold on a second. And go ahead. It, it was about to be accept you accept your lies. You know, accept your lies. Well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I, I'm it now, yeah. Now it could be we accept you except for your lies. Or the other way around, we accept we accept you from something, but we do not accept your lies. Yeah, uh, so we accept you except for your lies. So can, can you see my screen? Can you see my screen, uh, Ingrid? I see a screen, but no. Okay, so something else. Okay, I, there might be a delay. There might be a delay. Um, I think I can't remember the. Ah, no, I see it. Okay, no, good. I see it. So we accept you, but don't accept your lies. We accept you, except for your lies. It's the same sentence. Does, do you understand that? And, and, and please ask your sentence again, or ask your question again. No, except uh, the first sentence, we accept you. We accept you the way you are. Yeah. Except for your, li uh, except for your lies. Yes. You ex ac accept a person but you don't like the lies. Exactly, that's exactly yes. right. The and the other one? Mm -hmm. We accept you from <clears throat> um, having to do something from a... Um, I don't know the word. Was this an example that I made? Uh, every no, it wasn't the example. I it's something you found. I thought about this sentence. Okay. It could be both. Can you can you write it down or tell me again, please? Hmm. No. Yep. Take your time. No pressure. I, I think uh, Ingrid is uh, asking about pronunciation. Uh, the same, uh, this word are the same pronouns, you know, the same. Except, except the same. It's is not it, only about context. Yeah, is it about pronunciation, Ingrid? No, it's uh, about... Uh, the usage. What, yes. What did you say in, in the podca podcast? Oh, boy, what I... What did you mean? Okay. Well, first of all, the, the question was, do the words sound the same? And my answer was, 
yes, in daily English they do uh, sound the same. Effect and affect and accept and accept. They do sound the same when we say it fast. Um, but with the context, you should be able to understand which is which. So just by listening, the words sound the same. But by understanding, you should be able to see the difference. So for it's example, funny. yes, you have to do all the homework except page 201. Now some American students, they understand the sentence. They totally understand the sentence, but they might actually write this. Okay? Uh, and this is totally wrong. The, the sentence is written incorrectly. Um, but because it sounds the same, that happens a lot. But although they write wrongly, they understand the meaning. Yep, yep. Most Americans, even though you write it incorrectly, they would understand. That's right. Because we say it. We say the word in our head, and that's what matters the most. Uh huh. I'm gonna yes, try. in the context, I, I understand it. This is, you know what, Ingrid, you know what's really interesting is the spelling mistakes that Americans make are almost impossible for ESL students. And the reason is, is because an ESL student doesn't go by pronunciation, they go by the word, by the spelling. But Americans, we go by pronunciation, which is a, which is a problem. And I'll show you an example here. Hold on a second. trying to find a good example. Oh, come on. I can't find any examples. I'm looking for pictures. Just a second, please. All right, I'm not, I'm not finding anything, but I'll just write some examples here. Uh, um, I like your smile. Okay, so, so here's a couple of examples where uh, we use the words wrong. I like your smile. You're coming to visit me. Um, ESL students would never make these uh, mistakes, but many Americans do. Uh, it's their car. I want to go with their family. Let's go there. Once again, an ESL student would never make, very rarely make those mistakes. But Americans absolutely can make these mistakes. And let's, I'm going to take us to Google. And once again, the point of this is that in America we use the sound more than the spelling. So let's, let's do this. Um, I like your smile. I like 
your smile. 100,000 people wrote, I like your smile. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Um, and and that's, that's because we do that. Uh, you're coming to visit. So let's type that. Uh, you're coming. Okay. And here we have 686,000. Uh, but some of these are correctly. You're coming to. I'll try this. You're coming to. There we go. Thank you for your coming. If you're coming. Here we go. If you're coming to the Louvre. Completely wrong. Um, if you're coming to the tropics, completely wrong. Seven million people, seven million people wrote that wrong. If you're coming to Phoenix, unbelievable. Okay. Uh, but once again, this mistake is a mistake that native English speakers will make because we go by pronunciation. Uh, you know, you have something to it. Go ahead, Daniel. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, it's uh, it's pretty clear uh, why they why they they are doing such such mistakes because first years, well, when up up until up until until uh, school. Maybe kindergarten. I don't know where. Right. When, uh, when, when your first step, when when it English start to uh, uh, learn how to write and and all that kind of things. Yep. Uh, you learn English by only by sound. Exactly. Maybe first five five step six years of. You learn English by sound. And exactly, that's right. Yeah, and, that, and that's why. Uh, but uh, conversely, conversely, when a ESL uh, student learn English, he starts with textbooks. Yeah, it's always the he words starts, first. Uh, uh, yeah, his uh, his uh, the first encounter with English is uh, vi visual, not not by the sound. Not orally. That's right. Yep. Yeah, and, and that's why just they're making such mistakes. It's I think it's normal. Just, just an, another way of learning English. Yeah, it, exactly. And uh, uh, that's just the way it is. And I'm sure uh, in your language, I don't know, uh, but I would guess that that's possible to uh, to have similar mistakes uh, because yeah. it's based on sound. Even at Gretsche, you know, the difference between a spoken and written language. You know, if, if I read Leo Tolstoy, I'm not going to say his sentence in, in my conversations. Everybody yep. will say to me, what a weirdo, what a fucking guy, you know. Yeah, it's yeah. Possible, you know. That's uh, right. Uh, yeah, big difference, yeah, you know. Yeah, that's why, that's why, that's why I don't focus very much on grammar because Spoken English, even in the news, especially in a situation comedy, doesn't follow the typical prescriptive grammar rules. Um, however, if you're writing, you should be following the prescriptive grammar rules. And because the spoken language and the written language are different. And just like Sergey said, if you read Tolstoy, who's a brilliant writer, but actually nobody speaks like Tolstoy. We might write like Tolstoy. Same thing with Shakespeare. Nobody speaks like Shakespeare. Great English, but nobody speaks that way. Jack Kerouac, anybody. It's all the same. Okay, we have so many different topics. Are there any questions on DDM? 101, 102, 103, 104. Hello, Shane. Yes. Can I speak? Yeah. Shane, I would like to um, 
just to, uh, to say one thing. It's in regard to the DDM 101. It's yes. about the pot of gold. Don't you think that Sprite bottle is the Irish thing? <laughs> <laughs> because of the green bottle and because of the Sprite. It's the Lippicon. That's right. That's a, you know what? Uh, I don't know the history of the Sprite bottle, but you're absolutely right. Uh, Sprite uh, soda, of course, is uh, green. It comes in a green bottle. But then the fairy Sprite is also a green fairy. And, and, and of course, uh, the leprechaun is a Sprite, uh, which is green. And it's all related. So you might I think, be correct. Yes, I think it was invented by the Irish manager <laughs> of Coca-Cola. <laughs> you might be absolutely correct. <laughs> I like that. More questions? Oh, you guys are too easy today. Not easy. Not easy. You know, it's sometimes difficult to say, uh, I'm saying, uh, I'm an H, I'm an H. You know, only T, H, E, and uh, the big difference, you know, I'm an H, I'm an H. Yeah, these are, these are those tough ones. Uh, and, of course, perfect pronunciation is easy, on the edge, on the edge. But most Americans are going to say, on the edge, on the, on the. So I like to tell students once again, use two N sounds to distinguish. On the edge, on the edge, on the edge. But they're so tough. Very, very difficult. It takes lots of practice. And once again, we have to remember two things. The cancellation and linking that I'm teaching you is for your listening skills. When you're actually speaking with, uh, in English, use the best pronunciation you can. Um, so always remember that, please. That's, that's very important uh, to remember that. When I was like six years old, I wrote a song on the edge. It was my first rock and roll song. I wanted to be a rock and roll songwriter. Obviously, I'm not. <laughs> Singer. Not a singer, just a writer. <laughs> no, I'm not a good singer. Sergey, you could be a rock singer. Everybody knows. They know that great song. Everybody knows. Yeah, no. <laughs> I know that Daniel is a great singer. Daniel has his version of Michelle Marvel on our Facebook page. <laughs> yeah, Sandra Mokio von Trebian Ensemble. Parlez-vous français? You have a cat? Ah, yes, yep. <laughs> My He's cat is on the castle. <laughs> well, I, I, Jose's saying goodbye. Okay, he left. Yeah, I'm going to say goodbye too. Now, remember, our next hangout is in two weeks. So I hope that you take some notes and bring more questions on our subjects uh, next week. Um, hopefully, my... Explanation video and answer video explains everything. But anyway, uh, over the next two weeks, if you have any questions, please write them down and, uh, and bring them next week, okay? Okay, okay thank you, Shane. Uh, this is Alexey. Mm, uh, uh, my English uh, starts to better um, two weeks uh, before I don't understand. Uh, I heard only sounds, <laughs> and now I listen some words, and some words I understand. <laughs> oh, Alex! You know what, Alex? Two weeks ago, you said hello to me, and your <laughs> sentence was very short. 
but now, yeah. but now you sound so much better. It sounds great. <laughs> this is all because of you. Okay. Yes. Yes. And uh, your and your met and your method uh, uh, work, and I start to understand some words, and uh, I um, I may uh, explain uh, some things. And uh, thank you so much. Oh, uh, my pleasure. I'm very happy. I'm very proud of you. Uh, uh, Guria, you, and you have a great team. You and your wife can, can study together. I think it's so lucky. Thank you. Thank you, Shane. Coach Shane. Uh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. Uh, to everybody, uh, let me say hi. Uh, Alex, Daniel, Dinye. Julia, Ingrid, Jazz, uh, Jihang, and Sergey, thank you very much for joining. We had uh, a couple of people, Insuk left, and Jose left, uh, and some other people left, but uh, I thank everybody uh, for joining. I did record today's Hangout, so I'm going to upload it, and if you want, you can watch it later, okay? Okay. okay. Thank, thank you, Shane. Thank you, Shane. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.